All right, listen, I, I, I never thought Billy Epler was a good GM. I, I'm not even sure that the guy can read a calendar now. Can somebody play? Well, it doesn't matter at this point. Can somebody, though, so he doesn't further destroy the team, which he's done, by the way. Billy Epler has absolutely destroyed whatever remained of the season. Can somebody let him know the deadline is Tuesday? What's today, the 28th? Tomorrow's the 29th. Sunday, I believe, is the 30th. Tuesday is the day that you have to make trades by. To trade your only real commodity last night is moronic. So the Mets season is cooked. The Mets have given up. Billy Epler has destroyed it. And the morale of my partner, who I thought had as much morale as anybody in the Met universe, is wearing a brown paper bag over his head. So I can't show my face. Uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, going BT. And look, this is not on Epler. I, what? I know it's going to be the popular. I, I don't think it's on Billy Epler right now. For me, this is just another embarrassing year for a franchise that has had a litany of embarrassing seasons. I have to, last night, I go to bed because of that stupid rain delay, right? It's not raining yet. They still stop the game. And then, of course, the rains come down. I'm like, I can't take this anymore. I'm going to bed. I don't care. (laughs) I wake up to an email saying, Mets acquired two players. Uh, Who'd you get? Anybody? Any reinforcements? And through and it says, (laughs) now I'm reading the minor league names that I've never heard before from the Marlins. (laughs) Yeah. For dot, 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 David Robertson. Oh, what? Oh, it should be Mets punt on the season, fail miserably again in embarrassing fashion, wave the white flag and trade David Robertson. BT, I can't take it. This is one of, if not the worst season I have ever endured as a Mets fan. The embarrassment and the fact that they would wave the white flag. Now, I told you earlier in the week, I don't think they should be sellers this year. It's not worth it. And then they give up David Robertson, to your point, before the deadline. This is much bigger, though, than Billy Epler. I'm not blaming Billy Epler here. I'm blaming the entire organization for failing miserably with all the expectations in the world in this 2023 season. I think Billy Epler is horrendous. I blame him. If you're not going to blame him, I'm going to blame him. Billy Epler, hey, listen, we don't need to re- you know, rewrite history. It is what it is. But last year, and you can also make the case, well, who are you going to really bring in last year? I don't know. Somebody better than Darren Ruff and Danny Vogelback for a team that actually had a chance to do something last year. So from a Mets point of view, I would have been incensed about that. And that would have carried into the way they stumbled in Atlanta, the way they stumbled against the Padres, the way the offseason went investing in somebody who's 40 years old for 40-something million dollars in Verlander, who, by the way, has been pretty good. I want to be fair. The last, you know, six, seven, eight starts. And, but he's going to probably get dealt. Now you're hearing stories that he's going to be dealt yeah, to the I don't Texas think he'd Rangers. No trade clause, though. Get rid of all of them. Why? 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 Would, at this point, now, again, at this point, make sure you guys hear me. At this point, why would you keep anybody? Trade Scherzer, if everybody wants him. Trade Verlander, and I can see why teams would want him. But the New York Mets right now, it's just, it's its its really, it's embarrassing. Because listen, there's two. That's t- why I'm wearing the paper no. bag, BT. You don't got to tell me it's embarrassing. This is an all-time low. There's two types of oh, like, there's two types of lows here. There's the low, and, you know, we've all gone through this, but unfortunately for Sal and you met fan. Right. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So there's two types of lows here where, number one, you go into a season, you know you don't have a whole lot, you get your heads kicked in, you got to bear the brunt of five months if it's a baseball season, six months of it. Aptitude and you know, guys who stink and prospects who never materialize and veterans who were stealing money. That's a miserable way to go through a baseball season. But this, this absolutely must be the most miserable way to go through a baseball season. 101 wins, Super Bowl commercials, everybody's talking smack, taking the city over from the Yankees, taking the next bitch. By the way, as a Yankee fan. I was actually a little worried about it. I'll be honest with you. Well, they well, still do have this the guy's best pro- owner in town. I mean, that's, that's yeah. why I have hope well, for 2024. Yeah. LGM 2024. <laughs> Is that what it paper. says yeah. on the other yeah. side? Yeah. The, dude, you look like the Elephant Man. Remember the movie The Elephant Man from 1983? I am familiar with it, yes. I don't so, think I've seen it, but I'm familiar okay, with it. Okay, then you look like Rocky Dennis from Mask. Remember Mask? I do remember that. Okay, yes. That so movie I remember seeing. It strange me as a kid. <laughs> 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 now, so listen, we're not going to waste anybody's time on Marco Vargas or Ronald Hernandez. By the way... Yeah, but you're ripping Billy Epler. Well, I'm ripping Billy because what Billy did was so fundamentally wrong. Number one, again, the timeline, it's nonsensical, dude. You're playing the Nats tomorrow. You're playing them tonight. You're playing them three more times. You're not that far out of it. Okay, that aside, because we could all scream about that all day. You trade them in the division, 
in the division, which sticks it to you a little more. And you don't, and I'm, again, I'm not wasting time breaking down Marco Vargas and Ronald Hernandez. Uh, they were, one is 17, one is 19. That's all I'll give you. Can you at least get some pitching right. to get a catcher? Well, that's the other thing. You start reading about these prospects, and they're not even, like, the top guys in baseball. One of them is a top 10 in the Marlins organization, right? Yes. And, and neither of them, one's a catcher, which they have too many of already. He just Alvarez drafted and one. And then they don't get any pitcher. And by the way, to you, now, I'm not going to knock Billy Epler, but I trust Kim Ng more than I do Billy Epler. At this point. And I think she knows what she's doing with the organization. The, Mar- the, the Marlins, BT. You wonder why I'm wearing a paper bag? I'm not today. wondering. The Marlins are buying and the Mets are selling? What? The Marlins are dragged. The Marlins are an embarrassment. They're, try- they're not even built to win. And they're buying and the Mets are selling? This is a dark day in the history of a franchise littered with dark days. In a year, BT, where I thought the dark days were behind us. This is not supposed to happen with Steve Cohen being the owner. 877-337-6666. It's the Brandon Tierney, Sal Licata Show. BT and Sal on the fan. All right. We all like Cohen, and I don't want to morph into too many different se- you know, aspects of, 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 the, of the Met demise now. And, you know, hopefully Cohen is going to deliver that championship at some point. But i got to take a little issue with Steve Cohen, a little bit, okay? Not the payroll, he's spending money hand over fish trying to get Mets a winner. I respect that. But now I don't expect Steve Cohen to sit there and say, well, Billy, uh, this righty hitter uh, right. only ran 3.6 seconds out of the first base. It doesn't right. fit our analytical uh, scheme here. No. <laughs> Cut the checks, listen to your baseball people. But what Steve Cohen, you tell me if I'm unfair, unfair with this. What Steve Cohen should have absolutely done is look Billy Epler in the eyes and say, all right, Billy, are you telling me that the deal that you're about to make that's going to unplug the rest of our season isn't going to be there on Monday night? Are you telling me that? Now, if the answer is yes, then maybe you give him the latitude to make the trade. But Steve Cohen, I I just feel like he could have stepped in a little bit and said, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not August 1st yet. The deadline's Tuesday. Let's finish out the weekend. I think they made their decision after the weekend in Boston. Well, that's stupid. Right. Well, that's I mean, stupid. But I'm just saying, I think that's what they did. They, you you kind of read between the lines and some of the reporting, and it said the Mets were open to deals. But the fact that they would do, they waited this long. The deadline is less than a week away. What's the difference of just seeing what happens again? See, this is why I'm embarrassed today. Because the hope is now officially gone. Not that I knew, and you know where I felt on this. I thought the season was over when Diaz went down. And I was right, by the way. (laughs) I was right about that worthless baseball classic. That ruined the season. Right then and there, it was over. And then I thought it was over when they got swept by Atlanta because the Mets don't have any sack. This team is soft, and it drives me up a wall. But you want to be, T, as a fan, have hope. And you were painting a more positive picture than I was. You were talking about the Nationals here and the Royals and the Mets are going to make a postseason run. They technically could have. Would they have? I disagree. I don't think they would have. Yeah. You thought maybe they would. Well, now we're not going to know. No, I'm not they, wasting anybody's time at well, this point. No, it's over. No, but they gave up. Yeah. They waved the white flag. I'm not going to start shouting for the Mets to make a run when the Mets themselves said, we're cashing out. We're done. Right. Why the hell would I waste my time? No, of course. Now at this point. But they didn't even give you. Yesterday we were talking about, oh, let's see what happens next week. Let's see what happens if they lose a game this weekend on the Nationals. And they trade their only big trade chip. <laughs> Last night, it doesn't make any sense. Zero. Abso- I mean, you, you Met fans, I mean, apathy is not in you because you guys are just too far too resilient for that. But, man, oh, man. No, that's that- what's coming. <sighs> I mean, this is it, BT. Not honestly. with Cohen, it's not going to come. Not with what? Stevie Cohen. No, no, but right now for this year. Oh, for the rest of the season? Hey, after the deadline officially, like, <sighs> aside from them trading Scherzer or Verlander. Yeah. Dude, this you is don't it. even care about the kids anymore. Well, no, I don't. I'm wow. Sorry. No, it's not that I don't care. About no, the kids. I, know. I, I got that, you. Like, Maybe I framed that wrong, but you're not no, even like as far as the Mets being a talking point for us. Yeah, no, that's it. We're Yankees, huge oh, game Jets, tonight. Giants, we'll be, Yankees. Yeah, that's right. it. All right. Wow. So, there, that's apathy. That's the worst thing. It goes frustration, anger, hope, anger, more frustration. Today it's embarrassment. Tomorrow, apathy. Good job, Billy Epler. 877-337-6666. Let's get to you. BT and Sal on the fan. Charlie's in. Beth Page, what's happening, Charlie? How are you, buddy? Uh, BT and Sal, I, I almost went nuts last night after getting home doing four lacrosse games, and I'm watching the end of the Met game, and I hear that. My 1800 bottle almost went out my big screen <laughs> TV. I don't know what Billy Epler's thinking of. We have seven games with Kansas City and the Nationals, 
I'm going Saturday night. I don't even want to go now. That's how disgusted I am right now. See? Because we had a chance. We had a chance when you're playing. I was hoping to go 6-1, and 5-2 and two yep. and start thinking positive. Uh, but now we got nowhere to close out. And even if this year doesn't work out, we got the best 8th and ninth relievers next year, the best 8th and ninth combo in baseball. Well, they could, still, they, 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 they could still sign Epler next year. Uh, Epler. They could still sign uh, Robertson. And somebody may be trying to sign Epler next year. The Mets could still sign it's Robertson. Next year. <laughs> All right. The Mets. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not blaming Billy Epler for this. This is an organization. Yeah, I fail. don't get that. I know we keep going, but they, they, how can you not blame Billy well, Epler? For this particular move. What did he do this year? Oh, Nothing. No, they failed miserably. They okay. Failed, but I'm not blaming him for this particular. Like, we don't know what the return is. And ultimately, once I get over the anger and embarrassment, Maybe there could be a silver lining here. Maybe we look back on this day three, four years from now and say, hey, you were wearing a paper bag over your head, you idiot. This turned out to be a great trade for the Mets if they get two players for for Robertson or whatever they could get here, the more that they start to trade these guys. But for today, BT, it's an embarrassment organizational uh, you know, wide here, and it's not just about Billy Epler. We don't know what we're going to learn about Epler. Maybe this is a good move. You can't tell me definitively that it's not a good move from Billy Epler. No, right I'm not going to do that, That and that's where I'm going to stay in my lane. Again, he's about prospects, and nobody wants to get on that and get in the weeds on that on the radio. It's boring. The only thing we told you, how young they are and the position, because they obviously need young, you know, electric. I know they drafted a lot of pitching, to be fair, as well. They they really stacked mm-hmm. up on a lot. First uh, first pick I believe was a shortstop, but they had a lot of um, a lot of pitchers uh, that they drafted. You know, the last couple right, of weeks. Right, but if here. I were to tell you, BT yeah. Robertson's their most valuable piece, right? We all know that. Assuming yeah. they can't. And, and by the way, Scherzer and Verlander well, may well, be valuable. I think you can get more than more. I think you get more for Verlander, even with actually. that contract. I do. I mean, I'd love to see that. I think you might be able to. I don't know if Billy can. I think maybe somebody well, but could. But Verlander's got the $43 million next year. But, but, but he's the kind of guy that you could get. Now, Robertson gets outs, and he had a really good year. You know, something, you know Basically, a two ERA. Robertson was very good. Uh, but yes. you, know, you give the ball to, to Verlander in October, this guy could give you seven innings on a good team and get you a win. Understood. Two things with that. Number one, I'd be curious to see who's going to take on the money and then what type of prospect you get back. Number two, I don't think it's happening because I don't think Verlander would waive his no-trade clause. I think he and his hmm. wife want to be here. But let's just take him out of the mix for a second. Robertson, easily their most valuable rental that they have, right? What would be the yes. number one thing if you're the Mets general manager you're looking to get back? I need young, explosive pitching. It's pretty freaking simple in that regard. You'd want pitching, so I could understand the frustration here. But even with that, I got to assume that maybe that deal wasn't there. Maybe, you know, he, for some reason, Billy Epler liked uh, the kids that I got from Miami. But I'm not blaming Billy. This is just, a, this is a Mets thing. This is not a Billy Epler problem. So it's bigger than Billy. 877-337-6666. BT and Sal on the fan inside of our Town Fair Tire Studio. Friends at Town Fair remind you that you always get the guarantee lowest price on name brand tires from Connecticut to Maine. Nobody beats Town Fair Tire. Nobody. My poor partner's wearing a bag. That's where his Mets have driven over his head. That's where he is today. Mark's in Rochester. Mark, what's cooking, buddy? Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Listen, uh, I'm with you. I mean, Epler showed in, in Anaheim. I mean, other than bringing in Otani and giving Trout an extension, what did he do in Anaheim? He had two of the best players out he there. He stinks. He did nothing. He, he's terrible. And, you know... Well, they won 101 games last year. I think he met the Angels, though, Sal. Oh, okay. I don't care what Uh, Apple did with the Angels. I'm saying right now. You say, what did he do? Well, last year he won 101 games. Yeah, right. But, but, I mean, I think that was more in... That was in spite of him. Oh, okay, right. Well, that's not fair. I mean, even I'm going to say that's not totally fair. (laughs) In spite of him. Listen... I'm all right with trading Robertson, but I was thinking the Mets were going to get back somebody at least who maybe is closer to being major league ready that could contribute, if not this year, next year. And do you think it's a fair assumption or a fair uh, assessment to say that right now Mark Vientos, Brad Beatty, maybe not quite the prospects that we thought they would be? I, I, I want to see what Mauricio can do. He's a guy that should Bring him up! Rock- well, they will. Eventually, they will. And by the way, that is another thing you did notice about the trade. Aside from the headline, Mets acquired two players from Marlins. I swear to you, my first thought was, oh, they got some Marlins relievers. That's where the Marlins <laughs> are going to be sellers. And then you see that they're low-level players. One of them, 17. Low-level players, dude. Uh, 
Like five, you, you would be talking about five years down the road. Well, Billy Apple would be long gone uh, by then. He'll, he'll, I mean, listen, I, I, I hate to say it like this, but it is what it is. Whenever Billy Epler's time is up with the Mets, you're out of your mind if you hire him to be a GM ever again for major for a major league baseball team. Billy Epler was three thirty two and three. I, I know right now it doesn't matter what he did with the Angels, but on some level it does. Well, it doesn't matter to me. No, a no, lot I of got people, you. You could put stock in at the callers. I understand. To me, I don't really care about. Uh, what fa- he did fa- to you. Fair enough. I, I understand mm-hmm. delineating between the two. I, I I get that, but you're also you know your, your work and your life's resume is your work and your life's resume and he's 332 and 376 he's never made the playoffs with the angels he's got two of the most transcendent players of all time did nothing forget about making a play never even won 80 games had that ridiculous contract to Rendon uh Rodon I mean these Rendon, no, Rendon, Rendon yeah, you know exactly. Anthony right. Rendon Anthony Rendon <laughs> yes. formerly the Nats right and then last year he failed to improve a team now we could sit here and nitpick they did this against the Braves and right. they looked horribly against the Padres that team won the second most games in Mets history, and he did nothing to accent the roster. He made it worse. Basically, every move that he made this year failed. And that's uh, obviously a knock on him, but I also think that that's some bad luck. Remember, it's not his fault that Edwin Diaz got hurt in the worthless baseball classic. If that doesn't happen, maybe things change. The bullpen looks totally different where the bullpen has been a weak link. It's not his fault Max Scherzer is washed up. It is not his fault Justin Verlander was out for a full month of the season. It's not his fault Starling Marte has been injured. And on, it's not his fault Jeff McNeil's hitting 240 instead of hitting 320. So on and on and on we go. I'm not going to blame Billy Epler. I understand why fans are skeptic, uh, uh, you know, have skepticism when it comes to Billy Epler. I yep. understand the resume. You can't fairly judge a general manager. I'll tell you when we can judge Billy Epler. When these two guys that he just traded for, if we see them in the big leagues in three, five years, whatever it may be, yeah, that's and, when you start to say, well, oh, wow, that was a good trade or a bad trade. Yeah, and when we say that, Billy Epler will be sitting in a hammock on some beach drinking a martini because he's not going to be the GM of the Mets. Probably not. Now, yeah, is that by fair? the way, we'll come clean and say we were wrong. Billy nailed it. If, you, if they fail the next, the next Gary Carter, and I think the other kid's a shortstop. Catch a shortstop. The next Jose Reyes, yeah, we'll load him but for the move why, right now. It sucks. He pulled the plug on the Mets season, period. But that's why I can't blame him. But I can. He made the trade. Yeah, but the, he's not the reason why the Mets are where they are. It's the freaking players. It's this team. It's this organization again, BT. Time and time again. Why? <laughs> why the Mets? Why now? This was not supposed to happen with Steve Cohen. You know, I'm just happy that there's no uh, social media these days. And we're still <laughs> living in 1979. And and, and the, the imagery of my partner wearing a band will never be captured for anybody to ever see. You know, you're very lucky that you did this today. I thought about it. I'm like, I, I need to wear a paper bag today. And I was like, well, we just do a radio show. It's not on TV. And I was like, oh, well, wait a minute. They, uh-huh. they do do the digital clips, and we're on Twitch. So what the hell? Might as well get that paper bag. All right. If you want to yell, yell. If you want to listen. By the way, if you agree with Sal, which, which I think is nuts, but if you agree with Sal, by all means, we invite that as well. 877-337-6666. I think the one thing, even me, who was saying that the Mets are going to go on this playoff push, I think the one thing we could all agree on, after today, the Mets don't matter. 